Dorothy, the snowman, was a jolly happy soul with a corn cup pipe. Solid snowflakes. Also, Trivial Pursuit Peace Flakes and Balls Flakes. Show doesn't know how to crystallize correctly. I suppose it all started with the snow. Jimmy Duran aeration. Also, show completely refuses to ah cha 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 cha. Look, I'm not trying to get all political here, but can we really trust the U.S. mail when they carry their bags around gaping open in a snowstorm with the mail just hanging out like this? Especially when it falls on the day before Christmas. For when the first snow is also a Christmas snow. Wait, is it Christmas Day or Christmas Eve Day? Either way, why are these kids in school? Especially when there's two feet of snow on the ground. I suppose this is when the elder folk lean over to the children and say something like, Remember when drawing shapes on fogged up windows was exciting? Kids these days think they need the follows. We just needed condensation. I've hired Professor Hinkle, the magician, to entertain at today's class Christmas party. On a teacher's salary? Now, Professor Hinkle was just about the worst magician in the world. Accidentally exposing your deck and balls to a grade school class. The eggs have turned into... Um, fried eggs? Since apparently animators can't animate anything transparent, it's a clear problem. They're bored? Has this movie met children? If this happened in a real classroom, these kids would most certainly be pointing, shouting, and laughing their aces off right now. This kid apparently rides his sled to and from school. And since he's going up hills, I can only assume it also has an invisible propulsion system. You can keep your levitating skateboard back to the future. I'll take the magical perpetual motion sled. We're building a snowman. Not sure how we'll get any further layers on since this thing is already taller than we are, but hey, if we have to sacrifice the life of a friend or two to the gods of artistic integrity, we're game. Also, can someone build her some pants? It's f***ing winter, people. Don't tell me these are flesh-toned stretch pants or some sh this was 1969, and everything was made from wool, tweed, or shag carpet remnants. The head is the most difficult part. Ask anyone. I've always found the will to venture out of my house to be the most difficult part of building a snowman. Happy birthday! Shows like this ask us to believe that the proper response to a suddenly sentient snow being is to instantly adore it. In reality, every square inch of snow would be yellow, as all these children piss themselves screaming for their mothers. If that hat is magic... I want it back. And the children, understanding that it was his to begin with and to take it would be stealing, did the right thing and allowed him to have it back. The end. But it's not yours anymore. You threw it away. Oh, right. Kids. Also, this would never hold water in court. He was performing, and it was entertainment. No one is allowed to hold us, I mean him, responsible for any possible purposeful errors we, I mean he, might make while attempting to entertain. Even more also! Yes, we know, there's some well-documented animation weirdness involving this girl's clothing during this scene, but we refuse to draw any more attention to it, and instead are going to sin you for even knowing what we're talking about. Oh, uh, we sure did! These two talk in unison so well that it sounds like only one voice. Now, of course. Oh, we're doing this again? He's just going to inka dinka do this narration for the entire Jimmy duration of the show? Fine. The hat did belong to Frosty and the children. That point must be made very clear. Overstating your case. Me thinks the Durante doth protest too much. Happy birthday! <gasps> hey, I said my first words. No, you repeated your first words from a few minutes ago, you cold-faced liar. I can count to ten? And you can grow a fifth finger on just this one occasion, simply for this display. What do you know? I'm even ticklish. But no one even tickled you. You're really starting to freak me out, man. See, kids, back in my day, we would march in a line, and that was good enough. Nobody needed to talk a tick or flick a fleet or do a do. You gotta love a town where the buildings are generically labeled grill, restaurant, and hotel. It's like living in the town-sized version of the bottom cereal aisle with fruit spins, cocoa nuggets, and bunch of cinnamon squares. Person distracted by a curvy passerby runs into something cliche. This is not how mustaches work. Come on, kids. Follow the leader. Follow the leader or leapfrog? Because you said follow the leader, and if I understand the rules of that game correctly, everyone should now be crouched behind you like some sort of snowman centipede. Didn't you see that traffic light? What's a traffic light? New Yorkers. Oh, Frosty, you just can't melt. Oh, Karen? Karen's. Karen's scarf keeps glitching in and out of existence here. And I knew this was a Matrix movie. A refrigerated boxcar on a train headed north that otherwise only includes an engine in a caboose. It's almost like it was made for this convenient moment. Also, Karen, you are far too knowledgeable about boxcars. I send you. Are you coming to the North Pole too? 
I'm sure my mother won't mind. Between this and Polar Express, I'm thinking we need to add Don't Board a Magical Train to the North Pole to the child's safety list, along with Don't Talk to Strangers and Always Knock Before Entering Your Parents' Room on a Saturday Morning and the Occasional Tuesday Evening. Think nasty. Think nasty. Think nasty. <laughs> what? You wouldn't be sneezing if you weren't cold. Uh-huh. That must be why I sneeze every pollen season. Because I'm cold. Really some rock-solid logic there, Uncle Frost. So when the little freight train stopped, to let an express full of happy Christmas travels pass. Why would you stop to let something pass behind you? Hey, Bob, you're the Foley expert. What does falling clumps of snow sound like? Have you tried dropping a bowling ball into a pile of pots and pans? Perfect. That's why you're the best, Bob. But the woods through which they traveled were still bitterly cold. Which the narrator has to tell you, because the animators opted to avoid turning Karen into a lovely shade of death blue. Oh, hey there everyone! I bring you tidings of great joy, for unto you I bring this day a frozen dead child. Soon there was a spot. This works. A campfire. Well, isn't that all snug and comfy? <laughs> he blows out a campfire. No, for f**k's sake, plan out your sign lettering. It's not like the IES at the last word was a surprise that you didn't see coming. And when they didn't find Frosty and Karen on the hill, Santa followed Frosty's pad in the snow to the greenhouse. It's real, real sad that Karen and Frosty forgot to use the unlocked door to get out. An unavoidable tragedy for sure. Karen's reflection in the Frosty juices doesn't move, even though she does. Also, why do Karen and the hat have reflections, but the pipe doesn't cast one at all? Is it a vampire pipe? Oh, <laughs> this is about to get good. This Frosty in Memoriam flashbacks on for some time. All right, who left the Frosty puddle set to rave mode? Jelly Buzz? Pickle Sick? Greg? It'll turn into Christmas snow all over again. Santa's doing a real good job of explaining how Christmas snow will return and all, but there is zero mention of the importance of the magical hat. Yeah, it'll snow again, but that isn't what brings Frosty to life. Frosty returned every year with the magical Christmas snow. Except it's the hat that makes him alive. We just talked about this. Bye, Santa. Thanks for dropping me off on a very dangerous roof with loads of snow and ice. No way down. Enjoy flying into the Bruce Almighty moon. The hat has five petals. I mean, six petals. Five, six, four, no six, five, six, or four, no five, or six, or five, or six, or five, or six, or five, or six, or you know what? Just add them all up. Hey, kid, you wouldn't happen to have a cup of warm water, would you? Did you know the Cinema Sin writers have podcasts? Check out Sincast and Behind the Sins by searching for Cinema Sins wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm going to take Dorothy. Slide her into the center of the deck and put her back in my pocket. Now punch me in the face. Frosty it is! Frosty the snowman! Yay! And there was much rejoicing. Uh-oh. What's the matter, Frosty? Hands down, this is the best day of my life. And quite possibly the last. All aboard! Let's go! Come on, Mr. Frodo. I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you! And just what are you going to do about it? I'll hunt you down and gut you like a fish! <laughs>